All right. Well, shall we get to it? Shall we sit? Let's do this thing we do alone and together. Yeah, yeah. All right. So coming into a comfortable seated posture, anchoring into the heaviness and the hardness of the body, its earth element. And then checking in with the mind. Below the storyline, below the content, just coming to observe what's coming into practice this evening. Right now, it's like this. And that gives off some felt sense somewhere in the body. Is it pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral? Transitioning to the other physical sensations of the body, starting with the touch points of the feet against the floor or cushion, scanning at a pace that feels comfortable and confident, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral.
when it makes sense, transitioning to sound, resting in the awareness of hearing. And then transitioning to the breath, anchoring into the inhale and the exhale and letting everything else fall into the very distant background of the awareness. Resting in the awareness of breathing.
and returning to the breath if the awareness has drifted.
if the awareness has drifted again, what was so seductive? Past, future, judging? Acknowledge and return to the breath.
Here is the opportunity to know each breath more fully by becoming curious. Short, long spaces. Taking a few deeper breaths, inviting the eyes to open. Hmm. Well, we made it. How was it? Oh. 
training. Beautiful. Anything else? It's working. Coming back. So it's Earth Day, and it's also Mad Meta Monday. Mm -hmm. Triple M for the triple gem. So um, every Monday in uh, the All Star Dharma Collective, which is funny because this is the SF Dharma Collective. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Uh, we practice loving kindness, and I think it's beautiful that both things fall on the same day. Um, so how many have a regular loving kindness practice? One, two, three, four, all right, four. Yeah, okay, good. Happens to be my favorite. Mm -hmm. Favorite for so many reasons. But quite frankly, if we look around and we look at the earth and everything else, it could use a whole lot of more loving kindness. So we're going to talk about the Karaniya Metasuda tonight. How's that sound? Yeah? Yeah? Anybody from the screen have any objections? Because we can do freestyle. I'll do Dharma on demand if you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the reasons that I find this to be my favorite practice is when I started practicing longer than I'd like to talk about ago, it was the one thing I knew, knew I needed the most. It was the thing that I didn't have for myself, and it was therefore hard to extend it to others. And it's one of the most beautiful suttas. Actually, it's one of my two favorites in the entire canon. Not just because of the fact that it is around cherishing all living beings, but because also it has so much of the instruction of the Eightfold Path in it and ethical conduct. So what better thing to think about in terms of that Earth Day and our practice, right? Ethical conduct, non-harming is beneficial for all living beings, which then in turn, beneficial for all creatures. So I'm gonna read the Sutta because it's fantastic. It doesn't have to be fantastic for you, but it'll still be fantastic. <laughs> and then we'll, um, I'll go back and dissect it a little bit. And um, because almost all of you, except for one person, doesn't know me, I am very interruptible. So feel free. I love interaction. This is not a, you know, from the seat to the room. Um, I prefer the fact that when we can take these this into the world, then we're really Dharma action heroes, that we're all Dharma in action. We're being Dharma, as Ajahn Chah would like to say. So this is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied, unburdened with duties and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud or demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing the wise would later reprove, wishing in gladness and in safety may all beings be, be at ease. Whatever living beings there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, 
May all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another. Even as a mother protects with her life, her child, her only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings. Radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths, outwards and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain this recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding. By not holding to fixed views, the pure-hearted one having clarity of vision, being freed from all sense desires, is not born again into this world. Not born again. Now, I'm not so sure about that last part, but, you know, I'm willing to find out. So, breaking down the Sutta, one is loving kindness is the first of the sublime abidings or divine abodes, Brahma, Viharas. Um, one, I love this because I think it's a foundational practice. I, it's not just me. I mean, it's kind of commonly a foundational practice for um, setting the foundation for compassion arising or appreciative joy arising. And then it's clown, cr clowning, crowning, clowning. Wow, it's just me. <laughs> crowning glory is equanimity, right? To be equanimous. When the appropriate foundation is set, naturally when we see pain, we will feel for it. Compassion, karuna. With loving kindness completely at the forefront, a heart unbounded, then when we see success or uh, people having good fortune, naturally, we will appreciate that and want that to continue. There would be no envy, right? And so, of course, we'll be equanimous. But it takes another look at the Sutta itself, or at least this is, you know, what I love about it. And really, just for being from the seat, it's just sharing a practice, is that he implores us to be skilled in goodness, right? That's the first line. This is what should be one done by one who is skilled in goodness. That talks to us about sila, about ethical conduct, about our precepts. Has everybody taken or gone for precepts, have precepts? Some of them. Some of them. They're yours. They're, they're your precepts, right? One of the beautiful things about precepts is that they're yours to play with. They have your meaning. What they might mean to me may not mean to you. Of course, there is ultimately on that whole spectrum of, uh, and you're going to hear some of my own variation because you'll hear right view or wrong view. I think there's skillfulness, right? Wise. There's a wise view, a wise intention. There's wise mindfulness. There's, And then we all have some of it. And then you get to the opposite end, you know, like breaking a precept of murder. Well, of course, we're going to hit wrong. <laughs> However, most of us aren't murderers and bank robbers and that kind of thing. So we're probably somewhere on the spectrum of wise. And sometimes we're more wise in our ethical conduct. And then other times we're less wise. And it can take deeper meaning over time. So when I first undertook precepts, they had a very different context to me. In fact, there was fear around it. Like, can I do this? Maybe a Judeo-Christian, you know, kind of underpinning of like, oh my God, is it a sin? And no, it's around kind of set an intention around this. Look at the results. Reset an intention, vow and repent maybe to yourself and, uh, and occasionally to others if you need to or want to, to clean up, you know, but we're not going to be skillful all the time, myself included. 
But luckily with precepts, they, it's not as outward. It's now more of an inward practice of like, oh, look at that thought. Not translating into word or deed, right? And we have this whole aspect of the Eightfold Path that is really around ethical conduct. So when he talks about skilled and goodness, he's talking about people and beings who have undertaken precepts and are doing their best. Even in a monastic community on new moons and full moons, there's a puja where they go and they say, yeah, this is where I didn't hold my precepts to my highest standards. And here's how I'm going to, you know, try and do better. So it's all good. It's all good. But it is literally the first line of the Sutta. Oh, Eightfold Path, right there. Ethical conduct, right there. Who knows the path of peace, so has heard the teachings, is practicing. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, so wise speech. Ooh, right there, right? Skillful in speech. Humble and not conceited. Contented and easily satisfied. Well, you know, dukkha is a level of dissatisfaction in a translation. So maybe we practice more loving kindness when we're feeling dissatisfied or a, a lack of ease. Unburdened with duties and frugal in their ways. I think this is more of a monastic community, not people with, you know, the nine to five or the families or that kind of stuff. This is, you know deep in practice, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud or demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove. Again, we still haven't even gotten into the cherishing or the action of it, but we're really talking about ethical conduct here. To be mindful, to be humble, to be straightforward. Beautiful, right? Ooh, good stuff. So now we get into action, right? We've gotten into restraint, refrain, renunciation, but now this is getting into the action. This is where it gets good. Wishing in gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease. That is one tall order. There's a lot of beings. We live on a planet with 8 billion people. Did you know that? Wishing them all with an unbounded heart, that is a tall order. And we keep going. We keep going. Whatever living beings there may be, there's so many. Whether they are weak or strong, omitting none. The great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, may all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another. Oh, another precept right there right? Or despise any being in any state, freed from ill will, let none through anger or will wish harm upon another. So no evilness of wishes, regardless of who they might be in, you know, the public sector or doing the oppressed or the oppressor, we're wishing all living beings, regardless of your personal views, et cetera, we're working on cherishing. That doesn't mean we're working on condoning actions. It just means that we're looking, working on breaking through this heart, this heart mind to be unbounded and to be free. Even as a mother protects with her life, her child, her only child, with, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings, radiating, radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths, outwards and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will. Ooh, he really meant it there, right? Anger and ill will. This is the antidote. This is what he's saying is the salve to, to an aversive mind and heart that can manifest in either unskillful thoughts of ill will, anger, et cetera, et cetera. In the, I'm an aversive personality type, so I have a very quick and easy button, not as easy anymore, but to go ill well. Don't like, don't want, 
don't care, don't judge, you know, I'm judge, what, what, not that, not that, not that. <laughs> so this really was the practice that I did need. Whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, he's saying this is a 24 seven practice. One should sustain this recollection, right? I can't levitate. So this pretty, pretty much means just every other posture, practicing this until it is realized. In fact, in the entire suttas, he says to be mindful and to have loving kindness as 24 seven practices. These two things together. Tall order, right? Mindful, that's, that's enough. And to be loving and kind. Yes, please. Ooh, feels good, right? Free from drowsiness, one should sustain this recollection. This is to be is said to be the sublime abiding by not holding to fixed views. So having wise understanding, wise intention, wise actions. The pure hearted one having clarity of vision to be clear seeing. Freed from all sense desires. So no greed, no ill will, no delusion is not born again into this world. So much there, right? There is just so much in that particular sutta to work with. Um, and you can take a little piece or a lot of pieces and work with it. Um, I want to take a few moments to just stop talking and take questions or comments or you know experiences with your own practice around doing this. We will practice loving kindness before we say goodbye today. Or I'll just keep talking. <laughs> but I do want to make space. So in a culture that is not necessarily geared towards having an unbounded heart, a culture that makes a lot of money on us not liking ourselves and not liking each other, this is a really wonderful practice. So if you've ever struggled with self-esteem, self-worth issues, Practicing only love and kindness for yourself for 30 days can be a wonderful practice, even if it's 10 minutes a day. Um, anybody ever have that problem? Yeah, right? And it doesn't, you can do it in all kinds of different aspects. Uh, it can be seated. It can be in the, I, I know a guy I know a guy. <laughs> it came out so weird. I know a guy <laughs> who was really struggling. And he had a he did this really crazy thing where I thought, well, that's bold. That is bold. And it's not going to sound that crazy. But for him, it, it felt really hard, which was to look himself in the mirror and practice loving kindness just to himself for 10 minutes every day. And he would report to me, I can't even look myself in the eyes while I do this. That's how much he had been holding himself out of his own heart. Oh. Oh. But he was so brave, he kept going. He kept going. And on and on he went. Until finally one day, he just broke down in tears and he cried it out. And his heart started to break open to himself. Oof. 
And he kept going and kept going. Now, is life perfect? Does he love himself completely and love the world completely? We still practice together 17, 18 years later, and which feels crazy to me <laughs> to say that number. Um, he still comes back to this practice. He still comes back to this practice. Um, I know a woman who we sit together and she happens to defend um, clients who are on death row. And she was um, in a capital punishment case last week. And I would get these texts. I'm just practicing, practicing loving kindness for the prosecutor, for the jurors, for myself, for my client as I sit here in this room because it's so stressful. This is helping me weather this storm. That's a tall order, right? <laughs> you can practice anywhere, everywhere, 24 seven. Um, I'm from LA, so I learned to drive by swearing in the car. It's part of driver's ed. My youngest, when he was three, was such a good teacher. He said, mommy, you're always so calm except in the car. <laughs> so uh, the practice of loving kindness meditation looked a lot like this when somebody was cutting me off. <laughs> Just quietly, may you be happy. May you be content. May you wake up. May you be mindful. <laughs> Riding a motorcycle, that's really important, as Cheyenne knows. And uh, walking, right? Standing in line at the grocery store, if, if you do those things again or anymore. Um, standing in line meditation, uh, loving kindness is fantastic because this is a, that's a whole bunch of neutral people who might, you might be feeling some impatience with because they're standing in line too and they just happen to be in front of you. Oh, wonderful objects of meditation, right? And so uh, there's so many chances to practice. So many chances to practice. I know... Um, I'll tell one more story. And I have permission to tell all these stories, by the way. I'm not like, disclosing people's personal stuff. So some time ago, and Diane was talking about uh, being in San Jose. So this was when I was still in San Jose. And this guy came to me and he had this idea of what it was to be a man. And that he hadn't quite achieved that. He hadn't quite achieved what he had been conditioned to think was being a man, right? Married, kids, provider, homeowner, all the American dream stuff that, you know, programmed in at such a young age. Like, you're only successful if you have achieved these things. <laughs> and so, you know, I gave him this, like, little homework assignment. And I said, hey, just try it out for 30 days. Super masculine guy, personal trainer. You would walk into it like this. And um, he said, well, the only way I'm going to do this is if, you know, if I have to be accountable. And I said, well, you can text me every day if you want. And he did. I was like, whoa, he's actually, he meant it. Holy moly. First day, out walking the track. He was practicing loving kindness. He goes, oh, this is ridiculous. I feel so corny. And so it went, this is so, oh my God, people are so silly. I feel so silly. I'm like, cool, okay, so what's it like to feel silly? Keep going. You're going the right way. About two weeks in, I get this text. I'm smiling at people for no reason. When did that happen? I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> you tell me, if I keep going, you're going the right way. So loving kindness really is the antidote to so many states of mind that really keep us separate from each other. You can take it on as 
If you don't have a daily loving kindness practice, highly encourage it. He did. He was very clear about that sitting, standing, walking, or lying down. One should sustain this recollection to be mindful, to have an unbounded heart. And people give us so many opportunities to practice loving kindness. You can say, thank you. Thank you for being the object, maybe not out loud. I highly don't recommend doing that out loud because <laughs> that's how the fight starts. <laughs> uh, but hopefully there's some ideas to maybe build more into your daily practice, your daily practice off the cushion to be a Dharma action hero. All I mean by that is practicing Dharma off in the world. And then, but wait, there's more like the best infomercial ever. There's 11 benefits. There's way more than 11 benefits. I am not much for um, some of these, so take them with it however you feel. But I have found that people are often, uh, oh, hold on. I'll, I'll just go through the 11 and then you can feel about them however you feel. You don't have to feel, right? They're your feelings. Those are your facts. One sleeps well. So if you have an insomnia and you happen to have a difficulty sleeping, practicing loving kindness while you're trying to go to sleep, it's a concentration practice. It may help relax you. If you have, you know, tightness or anxiety or that kind of stuff, sticking a hand over one or you know two hands over the areas and practicing into those areas can really help relax you maybe maybe it will i'm not gonna i'm not making any promises it's just here one does not have nightmares one wakes up feeling well one becomes dear to human beings one becomes dear to non-human beings <laughs> The deities protect one. Neither fire nor poison nor weapons can harm one. These two here, that's where I kind of I, I kind of go, hmm, take that one with a big dose of salt, not a grain, like, you know, a teaspoonful maybe. One's mind is easily calmed. One's countenance, countenance is countenance. I'm having a hard time today, is serene. One dies without confusion. And beyond that, should one fail to realize Nirvana, one is reborn in the higher heavens. I have found in my own personal practice that when my heart is uh, imbued with loving kindness, that actually that kind of comes back, that people are not as rude. Living here in San Francisco, I don't, you know, almost get more surprised when they are rude. Like, oh, right. I live in San Francisco. That's a thing here. It's a thing everywhere, but, you know, it does seem to be acute here. Um, I can tell you that uh, having that practice at DMV, showing up loving kindness. Yeah. It's amazing. So Yelling at everybody, like, whatever. You know how they do in the, in the community. And... Uh, and you just show up, you smile, and you talk to them like they're people, <laughs> and you're kind, and you and you get you know these people who are just miserable, right? I mean, a lot of them are that work there. I mean, it looks like a miserable place. It's like a maze of cubicles, and like, it's terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, and I've always had really, really, really good help. They've been very sweet to me, and that to me, I'm like, okay, I'm doing it right. If I can get the people at the DMV to be sweet and kind and stop what they're doing and breathe and connect with me for a second. It's you know, right. <laughs> I love that. And so if you didn't quite hear that on the call, Cheyenne was talking about um, having really wonderful experiences at the DMV before your jaw drops. Um, this was around practicing loving kindness while going through the different aspects of navigating the DMV and the people who work there and really feeling for the fact that it is a miserable job. 
um, and really practicing love and kindness and having really sweet results in return. Thank you for sharing that. That is a really good place to practice love and kindness. <laughs> Super size it. Yeah. Yeah. And then a couple other thoughts. So we will do some loving kindness practice before we venture off into the rest of our, our evening or day. Um, play with that practice too, it's yours. So the Buddha taught it in a very specific way. We traditionally practice in a specific way, self, because there was this idea that, you know, it would be easier to start with somebody that you love. And so I know that in a Western culture, that sometimes is a little bit harder, but still try. Someone you have benefited from, benefactor, someone who has uh, done you well, either they've supported you or held you in some way, big or small, maybe even believed in you at a time you did not yet believe in yourself. They saw you someone that is near and dear to the heart. There's no barriers. The heart just says, of course. And honestly, when starting with the self, if that feels too difficult to access, if it feels like there's too much of a barrier, I say, call to the heart someone that is near and dear to you before you start practicing to remind you that this is yours. This is your inner goodness. This is your nobility. This is your well of kindness. You were born with this, it's your birthright. Reminding you that you actually possess it already. There's nowhere to go but in. It's yours. And then we go on to a neutral one. There's so many neutral ones. It could have been it can be any passerby or as you're standing in line or, you know, faceless person or even somebody that you see every day and you just don't know them well enough to like them or dislike them. They're just there, neutral. Jack often says, pick one neutral one that you do see on the regular secretly practice loving kindness towards them until they become your near and dear neutral one. Ooh, that's a challenge. So that you're starting to cherish all living beings. And then we get into the harder ones, the difficult. Maybe don't start with your most difficult. Maybe start with someone who irritated you today. Maybe it was the person that cut you off on the way over here or a difficult conversation that you had, but maybe not your most uh, burning resentment. And then we start to practice it outwards to all living beings everywhere. One of the other things that uh, has evolved for me in my practice, and this is me sharing a practice, so it'll sound a little different, right? And you can each have your own words. If you have a regular loving kindness practice, you can totally ignore me. That's an option. Do your own. But um, I don't tend to say the word happy. He does say content in the sutta, and I do say content. Um, I do find that I, um, as I have been practicing over the years, uh, culturally, culturally, tr happiness is a transactional action in our society. If I only got the job, then I'd be happy. If I had got the partner, then I'd be happy. If I weighed the weight, I would be happy. If I looked the way, if I, you know, the, bu -bu 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 -bu, you get the thing, you get the car, da, 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 the car gets scratched. It's a piece of shit. Sorry if that's just no swearing room. So hopefully somebody gave you a warning that I was coming. <laughs> Insight Richmond actually does do a warning when I can drop in for them. <laughs> the language is getting in spicy. <laughs> um, so content has a different connotation. And that means that we are comfortable in our own skin. And really, I believe that that is the manifestation of us embodying and then being uh, 
an unbounded heart of loving kindness is that we are content, easily satisfied, naturally frugal in our ways, not striving, not getting, not attaining, not looking for happiness, but that we are comfortable, that we are at home in this divine abode. And you completely feel free to disagree with me and do your own practice. But we're gonna, I'm gonna offer a loving kindness practice before we wrap up for the day. Um, any questions or comments before we go there? Ready to bust open some hearts? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. 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 Okay. So not such a rigid meditation posture. This is such a lovely space. Can't believe I've never been in here. Sweet, sweet. Okay. So relaxed posture, relaxed front body. Bringing awareness back to the breath, breathing in, breathing out. Collecting the mind on each breath. And letting that next breath tap into the heart mind, that inner well of goodness, kindness, gentleness, and nobility that is your birthright. Letting it well up into every cell of the body and maybe even outward. If it feels difficult to access, call to the mind and heart somebody that it is so easy for you to wish well for. The heart just jumps up and says, of course you, reminding you that you already have this. And then from your heart to your heart, for your heart, offering it these words, may I be content. and at peace, free from suffering and the causes of suffering. Living this life with joy and the ease of well-being. Awakening to my truest nature. And just as we wish to be safe and content and at ease, so do all living beings, all of them. So sending this wish out to someone that you have benefited from. May you be content and at peace, free from suffering and the causes of suffering, living this life with joy and the ease of well being.
awakening to your truest nature. And then sharing and extending again to someone that is near and dear to the heart. There's no barrier. May you be content and at peace. Free from suffering and the causes of suffering. Living this life with joy and the ease of well-being. Awakening to your truest nature. And then extending and sharing again with someone that is neutral to you. No pleasant or unpleasant feelings towards them. May you be content and at peace. Free from suffering and the causes of suffering. Living this life with joy and the ease of well-being. You now extending to someone that is difficult to send this wish to. You've been holding them out of your heart for some reason. Some disappointment, miscommunication, disagreement. They are incredible teachers. So if it's even possible, give the difficult ones in our lives a little bow of gratitude for showing us where our heart is closed, where there is work to be done. Even if it's through gritted teeth, may you be content and at peace. Free from suffering and the causes of suffering. living this life with joy and the ease of well-being. Awakening to your truest nature. And then extending outward, starting to include all of the other beings. Start with the millions and millions and millions of Buddhists who send you this wish every day, whether you know it or not, allowing your heart to connect to all of their hearts. May you be content and at peace free from suffering and the causes of suffering living this life with joy and the ease of well-being awakening to your truest nature
and then extending and sharing with all the other beings who are committed to walking a path of peace, wisdom, compassion, regardless of the label or lack of a label. So many beings committed to walking a path of, of awakening. May you be content and at peace free from suffering and the causes of suffering. Living this life with joy and the ease of well-being. Awakening to your truest nature. and extending to all the beings who are afflicted by poverty, whether it is the poverty of health, wealth, love, connection, addiction, the poverty of a mind that is consumed by greed, ill will, delusion. May you be content and at peace, free from suffering and the causes of suffering, living this life with joy and the ease of well-being, awakening to your truest nature. Extending and expanding again to include all beings who are oppressed and their oppressors. In all directions, connecting to all living beings without exception, near or far, known or unknown, seen and unseen, born and yet to be born, cherishing all living beings whatever beings they may be. May we be content and at peace, free from suffering and the causes of suffering, living this life with joy and the e ease of well-being. Awakening to our truest nature, our most beneficial nature. May we all be free. Yeah. Staying here or taking a few deeper breaths and inviting the eyes to open. Hey, welcome. It's like a Dharma flower just popped up. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> right on cue. We're practicing loving kindness. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so how was that? Mo well, meta always makes me feel better. Mo meta, meta mo better. <laughs> yeah. Works every time. Yeah. Works. Yeah. yeah. Super size it. Can I do anything in our stuff the rest of my life easily? Ditto. Yeah. Practice for the rest of our lives. It's actually in the Suda. I mean, it makes like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes it all better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any additional thoughts, questions, comments? Anything from the screens? I hope it's okay. I'll share my favorite meta prayer just because I feel, I feel, I really feel it every time I say it. And when I'm driving or um, in a car or on my bike, 
may everyone get home safely. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely welcome. Anything else? No? Yes, please. Yeah, please do. I just wanted to throw in there that um, I've been told by a couple of teachers, and I found it to be true that whenever I'm struggling in my practice, and what I usually struggle with is distraction, Mm -hmm. lack of concentration and my mind going all over the place during my meditation that whenever I'm, I'm really struggling with that, um, that the concentration practice of loving kindness is really, really has helped me with that. Mm -hmm. And to do it several days in a row, maybe for quite a few weeks um, has been really beneficial to bring me, to bring my practice back in line, just in the, the in, insofar as being able to be less scattered and less distracted in my practice. And it has, the extra side benefit of um, allowing me to have a, a, a kinder perspective towards the other people that I encounter on a daily basis, whether they're people that that I'm close with or people that I just see on the street or people who almost kill me in a crosswalk or <laughs> whatever it is. So I really, I, and I really appreciated you bringing this practice here to us this afternoon. So thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for sharing that. And I think there was some real um, tidbits of wisdom. Thank you very much so. Um, this is a, a concentration practice. Mm -hmm. It is. It is absolutely a wonderful practice to bring in when the head weasels are running amok and they're not friendly, right? Can't get focused, can't focus on the breath, practice loving kindness. Can't sleep because the mind is racing. Loving kindness. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. And um, you are so welcome. I'm so super happy to be here. Yeah. I'm uh, going to what do you call that? Rod those coattails there for a second and say. Do you want to you grab the oh, mic, Cheyenne? Sure. I think that's a thing here. Okay. okay. On that screen. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, I wanted to say that um, to ride on those coattails of what was just said, that a lot of times that we um, have, we wake up in the morning and we feel like that person that we despise. We feel like we're that person that um, we can't stand or, you know, and I think a word for that is wake up grumpy or on the wrong side of the bed and um, having compassion for yourself and allowing yourself to feel, feel that way um, and looking at it and investigating it, but also just having compassion for yourself with like, you know, well, I'm having a bad day today and that's okay. Um we're allowed to have those and, um, and to feel, you know, you know, like, like punching a wall or something, you know, um, and that's okay. That's the human experience. Right. Um, but having compassion and loving kindness for ourselves when we're in those positions is like, I think what's really taught me a lot more than anything that it's okay. Um, to feel, uh, pissed off at the world because, you know, Again, that's part of the human experience, but yeah. And it's so nice to see you again and um, get to see you before you leave. Yeah, I'll yeah. be back. Oh, we yeah. So far. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for sharing that, Cheyenne. I think we all can relate to that for sure. And Julie? I, I just wanted to say that I always... Um, 
seven is may all beings. And of course, I'm a being, but when you said may we, all of a sudden there was that interconnectedness. So thank you very much. That was really nice. Yeah, we're not separate. You're welcome. Part of the mix. Part of this big giant mix. Yeah. Um, well, we're coming close to time. Um, are there closing announcements? Anything that needs to be done or said or? Yeah, um, just a couple of things. Um, check the schedule online for upcoming events. There's a few different things going on, but I just wanted to make a shout out for um, this Thursday evening is the last evening Kevin Griffin will be here this month, and we're hoping to, to get him back here soon. This will be the culminating evening of the, the, the four Thursdays in April for him, and that's at 7 p.m. here in the space, and it's hybrid. Um, and then just the standard announcement that this San Francisco Dharma Collective is an all volunteer run organization. We exist by dint of our own um, uh, generosity. And um, I'm a volunteer. There are other opportunities for, for volunteering. And so again, look at the website online and, and see how you can you can access those opportunities. And finally, just a word about Donna. Um, the Dharma is offered for free, but the lights cost money. And the Zoom link costs money, and the heat costs money, and rent costs money. So if you're in a position to, uh, to, to offer something, some financial um, support, that's great. If not, just keep on coming back. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Wishing you a beautiful evening and beyond. And maybe we'll get to see each other again. Oh, thanks for the hearts, Diane. Did you see that? That was awesome. Can I do it? No, 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 no. Well, I mean it anyway. <laughs> Diane's got the hearts. She really does. Yeah, yeah. All right.